Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin Eun Sun. What do you want to be when you grew up? Parent? Thespian? Foreign service officer? Manager of a company? Firefighter? Cowboy? When you're a kid, it's all open. Now, I could go down the road of how all too often we identify ourselves in terms of the job we have, and uh, I won't, uh, at least for now. I could go down the road of right livelihood, but I won't. The point in asking what you want to be when you grow up is when you're starting out as a kid, the baseline is vast openness. You could be a cowboy. You could be a dentist. You could be a foreign service officer. No reason not to. There's no predestination involved. As time goes by, there'll be some causes and conditions that will have an effect on what career one might uh, find oneself in. But the base is vast emptiness vast evenness, vast openness. As the saying goes, the possibilities are endless. Now, as time goes on, of course, we grow up and we're students and then we do other things that people pay us for and we can self-identify in terms of those things. I'm an engineer, you're a lawyer, and think that these identities that we uh, impose upon ourselves have any sort of meaning. <clears throat> One mistake is the reification in the self that that does, and <clears throat> the other mistake is that it neglects the impermanence that careers seem to have. If you've ever been fired or laid off, you are well aware how impermanent employment can be. One day you might go to work thinking you're an engineer, they fire you, and then you're no longer an engineer. And instead of having that reference point of engineer. You're no longer an engineer. Once again, the baseline kicks in. Vast openness. Possibilities everywhere. Here's a little something from the uh, Platform Sutra. Addressing the assembly one day, the patriarch said, I have an article which has no head, no name or appellation, no front and no back. Do any of you know it? Stepping out from the crowd, Shen Wei replied, It's the source of all Buddhas and the Buddha nature of Shen Wei. Winung retorted with, I have told you already that it is without name and appellation, and yet you call it source of all Buddhas and Buddha nature, reprove the patriarch. Even if you can confine yourself in a mat shed for further study, you will be a Chan scholar of secondhand knowledge. That is, knowledge only from books and from verbal authority as opposed to uh, experience and intuition. <laughs> Shen 
something from uh, Da Hui. The Tathagata's palace is boundless. Naturally, those who are awakened are within it. This is the gate of great liberation. No gain or loss, no silence or speech, no coming or going. It is so in every atom of dust, every land, every moment, in all phenomena. The Tathagata's palace is boundless. Boundless. Like when you're a little kid and you can be any number of things when you grow up. Boundlessness. No restrictions. No fences, no walls. No separation between me and you, me and the rest of the universe. Boundlessness. It took about Buddha nature in there. And quite often, that's the kind of thing that, like Shen, we, we decide to call it Buddha nature and give it that name, and that's pretty much as far as it goes. It's an intellectual concept rather than a state, an essence, if you like. Some people don't like the word essence. I have no problem with it. So the essence of Buddha nature. Although, as Wee Nung tells us, got no name, got no appellation, so don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in the uh, concept of Buddha nature. The Tathagata's palace is boundless. Naturally, those who are awakened are within it. Birds and dogs and all other beings in the animal realm. They do bird things, they do dog things, they don't think about it, they don't put names on it. They have birdie nature, they have doggy nature. They just do what birds and dogs do. They have no choice. It's not like they would even want one. It's not like it's even a possibility. Birds do bird stuff, dogs do dog stuff, and that's just the way it is. In the human realm, however, we have no such limitations. And of the six realms, Divas, Asuras, humans, animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. Humans, the one we're in right now, this is the realm from which we can awaken. Dogs ain't gonna wake up. Hell beings ain't gonna wake up. Even Divas and Asuras, not happening. We have the capacity, we have the essence of awakening within us. That's our baseline. That's our boundlessness. That's the lack of hindrance, uh, walls, fences. They're not there. In the reality of the situation, boundlessness. Now, on the other hand, you do not necessarily have 
thespian nature. You don't necessarily have architect nature. These are all just things that we, you know, attach to. It's totally superfluous. What we do have, though, as the birds do bird stuff and dogs do dog stuff and even architects do architect stuff and thespians act and all that, all those things that we as humans find ourselves doing are just ways to occupy our time. It's not a reflection of anything other than an illusion. It's just so many layers of illusion. It's I, I think, I think I am, I think I am an name, career, all those things, total dreams. No reality in it whatsoever. But as you've heard me mention once or twice before, since our baseline is this boundlessness, this vast openness, And as Dawe says, the Tathagata's palace is boundless. Naturally, those who awaken are within it. If we want to be Buddhas, we do what Buddhas do. Just like if we want to be an architect, we're going to do architect stuff. If we want to be a Buddha, an awakened being, we do awaken stuff. And that's our true nature. Not any of this other stuff that we pile on top of ourselves thinking that, you know, it makes sense. If you want to be a Buddha, do Buddha. There is no reason that's preventing you from doing that. It's all wide open. Being Buddha, very easy.